So we've finished looking at how both viral mediated and non-viral mediated gene delivery systems work. Let's now look at the case example where gene therapy via a viral mediated gene delivery system is used to treat a condition called severe combined immunodeficiency, otherwise known as SCID. Let's start with a background of disease. SCID is a severe form of heritable immunodeficiency. It's also known in popular culture as the bubble boy syndrome. In affected individuals, the T and the B cell lymphocytes, which are specialized infection-fighting white blood cells, are either reduced in numbers or malfunctioning. It's also known as combined immune deficiency as it affects the function of two types of infection-fighting cells, namely the T and the B cells, while other immune system diseases involve only one. It affects about one in every 100,000 births. Victims are extremely vulnerable to severe recurrent infections and so babies usually die within a year. They have to remain in the sterile environment of their homes to avoid infections and if they do catch an infection, they are given massive doses of antibiotics. The quality of life for these patients is very, very poor. There are a few types of skid. The first type is X-linked skid. It's caused by mutations that result in a non-functional common gamma chain, which is a cell receptor for some interleukins. Interleukins are proteins produced naturally by our bodies to stimulate our immune systems and are involved in the development and differentiation of T and B cell lymphocytes. Without them, maturation of these immune cells will not take place. The gene coding for the common gamma chain is located on the X chromosome and hence this condition is inherited in the X-linked recessive pattern. The second type of skid is due to adenosine deaminase deficiency. Adenosine deaminase is also known as ADA. This type of skid is due to a defective adenosine deaminase enzyme which in normal individuals break down adenosine. In the absence of ADA, DATP will accumulate within the cells of these individuals. DATP will hence inhibit DNTP synthesis and this leads to an overall imbalance of DNTPs which will affect DNA synthesis. In case you are wondering, DNTPs are your nucleotides that make up your DNA. The effectiveness of the immune system depends on lymphocyte proliferation and maturation and hence DNA synthesis. Without our nucleotides, DNA synthesis is impaired and hence the immune system is compromised. T cells in particular are most affected by ADA deficiency as they are maturing in the thymus and they undergo recombination during the maturation stage. An impairment in DNA repair at this stage due to an imbalance of nucleotides will result in apoptosis. This type of skid is an autosomal recessive disorder which means that this disease is only expressed when both copies of the ADA alleles are defective. The most effective conventional treatment for SCID is a stem cell transplant, where hematopoietic stem cells from a normal individual is introduced into the patient in the hope that these new cells will rebuild the immune system in the patient. In cases of SCID caused by the missing enzyme ADA, patients can also be treated through enzyme replacement therapy where weekly injections of ADA hinder DATP add up, thus permitting some T and B cells to survive and to mature. A new method to treat this condition is gene therapy using the viral mediated gene delivery system. The first approved gene therapy procedure took place in 1990. This involves removing T lymphocytes from a child with skid and inserting the normal functioning ADA gene into them using the retrovirus as a vector. This retrovirus is then allowed to infect the T lymphocytes and hence transfers the ADA gene into the chromosomal DNA of the lymphocytes. These cells are then grown in culture to ensure that the ADA gene is active before being transplanted back into the patient. This is an example of an ex vivo approach to gene therapy. T cells suffer the most from ADA deficiency and hence they are chosen as the target cells. The production of ADA in patients is transient and lasts only about a few months as only a batch of T lymphocytes will be treated at one time. The patient's bone marrow will continue to produce untreated cells. 
treated cells will eventually die, hence the production of ADA is transient. At this checkpoint, you should be able to talk about what SCID is, as well as the gene therapy approach of treatment for this condition.